Hello everyone, Larry Satchwell here again on our rainy Georgia day. We're going to make another bluebird house today, this time a Peterson bluebird nesting box. This is a really popular design. Peterson is credited with bringing back the bluebird population in Minnesota. This is for an eastern bluebird. And Lee Valley, several years ago, made um, full-size plants, and that makes it really convenient. I don't know when I first made this box, probably in the late 80s. It's been up ever since, and bluebirds visit this box more than any of the bluebird boxes I have on the property. So it's a very popular design, works well because it's very insulated, and easy to see inside to check on what's going on. Let's get started. The first cut I'm going to make is on the 2x4, and you see this at 63 degrees. You're not going to find a 63 degree angle on your miter box. So 63 plus 27 is 90. You will find a 27 degree mark, and that's where I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to cut this 2x4 approximately in half and leave one half long, and that'll be this side right over here, the back. That way I can attach it to one of the fence posts up in the woods. This next cut is a 45 degree cut with the 63 degree cut on the other end. And it's I don't feel comfortable holding this, so I have clamped it down. Make sure you're working safely at all times. I cannot be responsible for your losing a finger. This board is eight and three quarters. And then from the 63 degree angle here, it's a 90 degree, and this piece is three inches. One of the nice features about working off a full size plan and that's why I normally make one, like I did with that ladder, blanket ladder I made a few weeks ago, is that you can lay your work right on top and make sure you've got the angles correct. And this is all the cutting for the 2x4s. Everything else is 1x. Full plant, size plants are going to come in real handy here because this is a big piece of wood. You can glue some wood up or you can use 1x12 stock, and that's what I'll be doing. Then over there I'll punch a little hole, and right here I'll punch a little hole. Lining up those marks, I'll put it on the outside like I did at the top, and then I'll put this on the outside. In the old days I would have used double sided tape for this, but today I'm going to use this green painter's tape and some CA glue. It's much easier to get off. It doesn't leave a residue and it's got great holding power. And then a little CA glue on one side. This is extra thick. It works a little bit better because the thin will run off the side of the tape. It's an accelerator on this side. And then I can put these two edges together. You really only kind of get one shot at this. So now that they're cut out, all I have to do is separate them, which is sometimes not easy, but in this case it is. Pull off the tape, and I have two identical pieces. So off camera, I, I'm going to get fancy with the front. I'm going to use this old piece of barn wood I have. Cut a 45 degree angle here, and then this is 12 and a half overall. It's 
So what I've done here is just laid this on the side and used this part of my combination square to draw a couple lines center. And then using that same combination square, I can mark the holes. Put one here and one about there. Over to the drill press. Everything is cut out except for this exterior top, and I've got some special plans for that. This is impossible to clamp. You just aren't going to get a clamp on that. So the best you can do is to aim a pilot hole the same direction as the board that's going to be going into. Here at the bottom I'm drilling a little pilot hole so it doesn't split out. Okay, we're about there couple more holes and we're done. I need to come up two inches from the bottom here and in three-eighths of an inch. I have these uh, siding nails and they're nine sixty-fourths. So I've got my crawl space here. This needs to come up one inch from the bottom. This is a pivot point, so I'm going to drive this siding nail in. It does indeed pivot. Same thing on the other side. And that secures it. The last thing to do is to put on a top. The plans call for a 9 by 13 inch top. Well, I've got some wood here I've been saving. They're cut off from a mill slab. And I like that a lot. It's not straight back here. So now I've got to figure out a safe way to cut that. The safest place is on the bandsaw. Well, and here it is, my version of the Peterson box. In the directions, they suggest not painting it. But they also suggest, if you have to paint it, paint it gray or brown. I'm not going to paint this, but I am going to give it a coat of boiled linseed oil. Boiled linseed oil is just a natural product. It's not going to have any effect on the birds. This is my version of the Peterson Slant Box 
nesting box for eastern bluebirds. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more in this series, make sure you subscribe and click that bell so that you'll know when other videos come up on my section of For the Birds.